he has pronounced himself on about high-rise building, 25, 70 floors, houses. Has he done any drainage? Yes, because I'm a lot in Nairobi, I'm going to go to the MCA. MCA is not doing their oversight. Vizuri is trying to manipulate us. Governor Sakaja must account to the citizens through appearances before Senate. He must be invited to put the record straight and these invites are invites that he must honor. First, it's to appreciate you, members of the fourth estate. Thank you very much for responding to the call by Nairobi leaders. What you see is a representation of the leadership in Nairobi and especially those extracted from the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition. And we have a statement to make in regard to the state of the city county. This is a press statement by Nairobi leaders on the state of Nairobi city county. It is our observation, an observation that is now the view of a majority of the city county's residents, that Nairobi could be facing its worst leadership crisis at City Hall in this capital's history. The dream that was sold during the campaigns of a city of order and dignity, hope and opportunity for all, has turned into the nightmare that Nairobi is becoming. Clamped in an ever-tightening chokehold of an arrogant, high-nosed, aloof, and dangerously corrupt leadership, Nairobi City is drowning in the murky lakes of free-flowing sewerage, estate buried in mountains of garbage, taps whistling to the tunes of dryness as storm waters flood our homes and businesses. The skies above the city skyline are being punctured by precariously unplanned, haphazard, haphazardly constructed towers that know no limit. Because the city sets no limit for any developer who is willing to bribe the approvers at City Hall with cash or apartments and commercial space in these high-rise structures. Nairobians deserve and are demanding for a leadership that has a plan. Nairobi deserves a leadership with a clear vision, a leadership that relies on a well-thought-through master plan as the cardinal guiding instrument that will be informing all policy decisions legislative proposals, programs, and project decisions. A master plan that is co-developed through an all-inclusive process that carries along all the stakeholders. We need a working plan that prioritizes the quick win actionables, schedules and resources for medium-term development plans, and clearly lays out the foundation for a sustained development and progress for the generations to come. A city development plan needs to be one that, is, that clearly highlights the achievements, milestones, and, co and, so, and with some coherent communication to the different publics on the progress with the achievements of each milestone. Now, almost two years after elections, the city is running Kyududo without any pronounced blueprint, with incoherent and disjointed efforts that prioritize only the projects and programs that feed the insatiable greed of the new city hall kleptomaniacs. The city county, actually, this current city county government will go down in history as the most incompetent, inept, deceptive, amateurish, insensitive, and morally degenerate administration yet. With only two years in office, the charges being brought against this, this city county government are innumerable and they keep mounting. A recent Auditor General's report unearthed gross mismanagement of public finances, payments of huge amount of monies to ghost workers, corrupt and selective payment of pending bills in exchange for big kickbacks, suspicious accounts and misappropriation of billions of Kenya shillings. In a shocking revelation last year, a junior officer, a mere junior officer, wielding authority directly granted by the governor, clandestinely approved over 600 building plans against the Physical Land Planning Act, which stipulates 
that the, the county chief officer is responsible for approving building plans. That would explain the Kyududo development and the unplanned high-rise buildings that are mushrooming and cropping up, uh, being plugged in every uh, corner of this city. Such cases of horrific abuse of power only give a sneak preview of the rot, of the rot house that is the Nairobi City County Hall, further indicting its highest offices in the, uh, at City Hall. The arrogance displayed in the acquisition of private personal luxury assets by the city's top leadership is shocking. Not only is it shocking, it is news, news yeting. Never before has Nairobi ever been pilfered so brazenly, so crudely, and never before with so much display of juvenile bravado, intimidation, exclusion, and undermining of those who they are not able to pay to buy with their looted billions. Pitting leaders against each other and sponsoring petty squabbles has become the expensive hobby of the governor and his court of loyalists, the loyalists who are loyalists for hire. The city county assembly risks sinking into a dysfunctional, remote controlled, ineffective house with the ever dangling carrot pro promised to those who are willing to sell their loyalty and dignity for a paltry 30 coins of silver. And we are saying to the executive at Nairobi City Council, let our MCAs go. MCAs do not need handouts, they do not need bribes. You need to institutionalize the World Development Fund so that these MCAs are able to conduct their development in their respective wards. MCAs are not there to beg for handouts in the governor's parlor. They are not there to be bribed for whatever reason that the governor thinks that these MCAs need to be bribed for. They need their independence. They need their financial independence by providing a good structure for the World Development Fund to be properly funded, well instituted, so that they can undertake their development in their, in, in their, in their county wards. It is for this reason that we, a representation of Kenya Kwanzaa leaders, and by extension, representatives of the millions of disgruntled Nairobi residents, want to call Governor Sakaja and his administration to order. We are also calling upon the relevant audit, oversight, and investigative bodies to swiftly intervene and rescue Nairobi from the shackles of rampant mismanagement and incompetence. We are starting right here at home. We are starting here in Parliament. Senate, which has the constitutional mandate of oversight over counties, must process the Nairobi situation with urgency. Governor Sakaja must account to the citizens through appearances before Senate. He must be invited to put the record straight, and these invites are invites that he must honor. There is no excuse by any governor as to why you cannot uh, honor an invite by parliament. An invite that is not honored calls uh, or, or attracts a summon. And when the summons are not honored, it attracts the penalties as stipulated by the law of Kenya and by the standing orders of this very honorable August House. He must be invited to put the record straight, invites that he must honor. It is the least that must be done. The very esteemed members of the press, uh, I will open this for the question and answer. And um, these questions can be answered in a popcorn manner. When you shoot the question, any leader here will be ready to field the questions. We, we, can, start, uh, we can start with the state broadcaster. Yes, <laughs> with a good re For good reason. My name is Abdi. Let me make a point in regard to the forthcoming uh, party, UDA party elections. We hear that Governor Sakaja is preparing himself to buy as the chairman of UDA in Nairobi. We are telling Sakaja to reciprocate as a gesture of gratitude to the Nairobi voters 
and step down his ambition to vie for that seat. And he will do this in favor of James Mwangi Kakuya, who we want to erect the Nairobi uh, UDA chairman. Instead of wasting his time vying for this seat, we are asking him to spend the, the, his valuable time going to the committee in Senate to answer the queries of audit. Um, on, the impeachment? on the impeachment part of it, uh, uh, what I want to say is, uh, and what we are saying as leaders, nobody is interested in impeaching Governor Sakaja. What we are interested in is a functioning county. Respect to the, uh, to the, uh, to the county assembly members. Respect to Nairobi people who voted for him. Respect to the constitution that when he's summoned by the Senate, he appears and answers the audit query. So the question about uh, whether we, uh, we intend to impeach or not, it is neither here nor here. Nobody is interested in impeaching him. We just want him to do the work that he was elected together with us by the Nairobi, Nairobians to do. I have a, state, uh, a, a very great concerns about the running of the city. Party affairs are matters that we are able to handle. And we will handle the party affairs when it gets to the party affairs. At the moment, we have such a grave matter that ought to be taking the acreage of, uh, of uh, media reporting uh, rather than what just concerns politicians. The party elections concern politicians. We are here talking about the plight of millions and millions of residents in Nairobi who are demanding for effective leadership, effective and prudent management of resources, but more so a, a leadership that is in touch with the aspirations of this city, of the residents of this city. The basic for any leader is supposed to be selling a master plan which you intend to execute for the benefit of the residents. As we speak today, Nairobi is devoid of any known master plan, any known blueprint, or any vision that we are working on. So the city is running on autopilot with decisions being made on the fly. This becomes a more critical issue for us to discuss than the, the UDA party elections. The UDA party elections happen, uh, come about. We are the ones in the political space. We will deal with it. That is open to UDA uh, members only and it is going to go the delegate way. So it does involve not um, the, the, the entire population. Yes. Well, uh, this is well informed by the information that is being received. For example, it is the Auditor's uh, General's uh, report that opens a window as, as to the goings on in the city hall. And this would be, it would be sacrilegious for these leaders to stand aside and watch the city slide into this uh, uh, dark hole that it is sliding into while we are quiet. Uh, I can say that uh, we are not in a bad relationship uh, because uh, when any one of us has an issue or an issue that is concerning uh, maybe one of us, uh, we do talk. What he is doing, what governor is doing is now when deciding about what to do in Nairobi County, he consults no one. For a very good example, a very good example, he has pronounced himself on about high rise building, 25, 70 floors, houses. Has he done any drainage? Has he done, has, has he increased uh, the piping water, the sewer system? Has they been enlarged? Like all of us here now, uh, we, are, we, are, we are on a rainy season. Everywhere is flooding, but where he is, he is talking about uh, a 70 floor house while he has not done any drainage. So what do we expect after those houses are approved? Is he only interested in money that is being, that will be paid corruptly by those people who are willing to do those, uh, those sky scrappers? This is, not, this is not an amount Kenya issue. This is a UDA issue. I know if you have been following politics of Nairobi, you have been seeing other, even senator. The senator is complaining. Yeah, if you look at Babu is complaining, everyone is complaining. Robert Arai is complaining. Is, is, no, what, what we have just done is we have decided to do it as a Kenya Kwanzaa and call him out before maybe the other side of uh, the political side decides otherwise. In the face of it, uh, there were some great achievements that uh, NMS was able to score. Uh, there are also very grave uh, audit queries that arose in the tenure of NMS. These audit queries had everything to do with how they were working. 
For example, there was a rolling out of Cabro paving in the city. Some of these Cabro roads were being laid on loam cotton soil without any pre-preparation of the foundation. Cabro roads which are now tearing now, uh, uh, apart around uh, Nairobi and the constituencies. So NMS had its hits and it had its misses. For the Nairobi residents, the conversation is bigger than that. The conversation is what is the place of a metropolitan city that contributes in excess of 66% of the country's GDP as a county. So the conversation is about how do we review the cardinal document, which is the constitution, to enable Nairobi City County to be able to operate like other metropoles, giving an example of Johannesburg, Washington, D.C. And we had seen that direction in the, in the, in the tenure of uh, Heichi Emeritus Mwai Kibaki, who had even proposed a metropolitan ministry. But the discussion about Nairobi as a county is an ongoing discussion. That's why we are calling Governor Sakaja to come on the table. Because in the interim, we can have a conversation as to how these boroughs will be operationalized. If we have four or five boroughs in the city, then the administration on the, and the leadership of the city becomes a bit more manageable. So I would want to see this uh, opportunity to members of county assembly to put in a word. Yes. Oh. Uh, just to say for those uh, who will hear Kiswahili, at least if you came Vijana Nairobi, my name is Abrani Tenya, nominated youth of Vijana Nairobi. Yangu nukusema, mimi kwa experience ya miakambili hapa Nairobi County nukusema Sakaja ya meshundua kazi, na under the MCA we are planning on how we can do our oversight, but as a yeye, nukutrei kubring on, iye pesa melutu Nairobi, nukuleta kuhonga ma MCA, MCA they are not doing their oversight, Missouri is trying to manipulate us. So, Yangoniat. Thank you very much. Yeah.